sometimes lay on dead leaves, so it makes it time. Um, to do it to frustrate surveyors. Do you see an egg? Mm. What's BCV's history with ponds then? Uh, on this particular site, this is a uh, Hacking Lane South. Most of the ponds, I suspect this one was done by Dave Orchard. They were all experimental and just a matter of getting a machine in and digging a series of ponds out. Some of them worked really well, this was probably the best one. Some of them, particularly on the canal, didn't work quite so well. So what you find is south of the canal, there's probably about 10, 12 ponds. Some of which are very good like this, and some of which just hold water in a, in a good year. So, uh, but the trouble with these is they're constantly treeing up, like you see in here. So although they're good for a wildlife for a bit, they rapidly lose the wildlife interest as they tree over. You start off with the dragonflies, not being able to use them and then eventually as the tree cover increases the amphibians can't use them, the newts, toads and frogs and actually everything eventually all groups sort of collapse because it gets more and more shady. These are still pretty good but they'll be much better now we've taken all the trees out. Here you can see we've pushed all the trees back from this central area here so this now is getting full midday sun. In fact I might check this one again because I've found them breeding in here, so why aren't they breeding in there? Because have they walked past it and it's not so good and just gone over there? So I'm going to check this again because we've probably both got great festive views in. I've just missed them. I nearly missed them on here actually because this is uh, the only egg fold I've seen. It's good, isn't it? So BCV didn't dig these ponds? No, they're all done by machine. Um, well, I think volunteers should be used for this sort of this sort of habitat management or planting. It, it does too much damage to bike digging all day. When machines, it don't hurt them at all. Valuable resource volunteers. Don't get them wasted. I just want to put this egg back. Because I'm going to find it. eggs on there probably about half a dozen so uh, that's the second the second of the two ponds has got them breeding in it this is atypical this hasn't been opened they sometimes just lay their eggs straight on a leaf without folding it that's a typical one with folding it you see the rat one you can see the shape of the egg so that's just one that's couldn't be bothered folding the leaf <laughs>
this leaf here is the home of an aquatic moth. Right? It's uh, quite a big family, they're all called China Mart Moths. And they live by the side of ponds. They look a bit like, the ones I've seen look like a bit like a clothes moth. And sometimes they're in hundreds. And you think, what are all these moths doing by the pond? Well, that's their habitat. And what they do is, they lay their eggs in water. And when they, usually on these uh, phonogetum leaves, which you've seen before, and they're always very, very precise cut on the leaf because a little caterpillar uses its mandibles to put itself a little house out. It then spends its life living underwater in this airtight enclosure, eating leaves from the plants around it. Gets through its life cycle like a normal caterpillar. I'm not sure it where it pupates, probably up a stalk or something, and then emerges as another. So it's like when you tell people it's an aquatic moth. And I can show you the actual beast here. This is a fur-sized caterpillar munching its way through life. I'll just open its little house up temporarily and then I'm sure it'll fix it when I've finished. And underneath it revealed the beast itself. A tiny little China Mart Moth caterpillar. <laughs> Any magic? We'll soon redo that, won't you, cop? Right, so, the wonders of pond. Look at that. Snail eggs stuck in the thing, yeah. They won't act for so I better put them in the pond, don't I? Right. <laughs> Right, sorry. Sorry, she's got a little bit of a 